Coming up on Hands on Android, I'm going to show you a number of ways to lock down your device. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. I went through a whole lot of different ideas for what I could do this week. And so with so many of the ideas, I just kind of came up short. Every time I looked at how you could do this tip or trick or how you could turn this device into that, I realized I wasn't addressing the feeling that I have in my heart uh, as relates to everything that is happening uh, in this country and in this world right now. Uh, a lot of important voices are being heard right now. A lot of pain is being shared, and it's important, and it's necessary. And I want to do everything that I can in my place to support this movement. So I thought I'd spend a little time on today's episode taking a look at what we can consider for ourselves, for protecting ourselves and protecting our data uh, when we want to go out, we want to participate, uh, when we want to make our voice heard, we want to be a part of this movement. How can we protect ourselves and our information and our identity when we're put into this situation uh, that is very upside down and very uncertain? Uh, I want to give you the tools that you can use to protect yourself before you venture out and make your voice heard. So today's episode is going to focus on ways to lock down your Android device. And uh, definitely, this is something that you want to go through before you leave the house uh, for making your voice heard in these ways. So let's dive in. Let's take a look at some ways that I can hopefully help you. Uh, to take a look at your Android device and understand what information uh, is being thrown out there in the world and how you can protect that and protect yourself by extension. So first thing that you need to do, you need to ask yourself, do you need a smartphone where you are going? Probably the safest way to protect yourself is to just not bring one, right? Our smartphones carry a ton of data. They have the ability to spew information in all different <laughs> directions, uh, picked up at cell cell towers, uh, picked up by Stingray devices, potentially. Location data is being stored on cloud servers, Google and otherwise. So you need to really ask yourself if you actually need a smartphone where you are going. And, and you might actually need one. Uh, but it's a question to ask yourself before you leave the house, because infinitely you are most protected if you do not bring the smartphone from a data protection standpoint you're just you're not going to be sharing data and information and personally identifiable information if the phone isn't on you and you can't be compelled to give over that device so keep that in mind if you do have to bring a phone uh do what you can to not bring your primary device if you have a smartphone which i'm sure that you know most of us do um, it's got legacy data on there. It's logged into all of your accounts. There's a number of reasons why you don't want to bring your primary device to something like this. Uh, bring a, a secondary phone of some sort, uh, even a secondary SIM if you want to be super protected. Um, make sure that it's wiped clean, wiped securely. You want to start fresh on that device. Uh, and definitely consider what apps, what services, what accounts, that you actually actively log into on that device. Uh, really be cognizant of what you need in this scenario and what you don't. And you know, the, the less information, the less accounts that you're logged into, the less data that you're sharing ultimately. Um, and so that can go a long way. Uh, keep it off when you aren't using it actively. When you aren't doing something specifically, if you keep it off, it's just it's not sharing anything when it's on in an off state. Or at the very least, put it in airplane mode. But airplane mode is not a catch-all. Like it does 
does a good, a decent job of protecting like location data sharing uh, in certain ways, but it is not foolproof by any stretch. Better than nothing, but something to consider. And ultimately on a smartphone, like a secondary smartphone, you want to set up, you know, your lock, um, your lock, lock screen security, that sort of stuff so that it's locked down. So if you do bring a phone, if you must bring a smartphone, here are a few things that you're going to want to address before you leave the house. Number one, is your device encrypted? Uh, encryption, of course, is how you protect the data that is on your device. It's tied to a specific key. If you don't have the key, you can't access the data, right? That's the idea behind encryption. So you're going to protect uh, very valuable information potentially on your phone, so SMS, passwords, browser information. Ultimately, it's on-device data that's protected when you're encrypting. Um, current Android devices are encrypted out of the box. It's mandatory. Uh, Google kind of made it mandatory for the most part, but you do want to check this just to be sure because there are so many different OEMs out there. Different phones do things differently. Um, Android 6 in 2015 was the introduction of required device encryption. So uh, the option should be in settings for you, depending on how old your device is. You might have to activate it um, yourself. You might have to go into settings, security, encryptions, or just go into settings and do a search for encryption, and you should find it. Keep in mind, this is encryption of the data that's on the device. This is not protecting any of the data that's in transit. So that would lead me to number two, is your mobile data encrypted, right? If you're, if you're transmitting data out from your device into the world and you need to, you want to make sure that that data is encrypted as well. For that, you're going to need a VPN running on your device. A VPN, of course, is a go-between that kind of sits between the device and the rest of the internet as you access it. Uh, so it changes the IP address. Um, that the sites actually see when you're connecting to them. It hides your true IP address uh, and in place, you know, inserts this other IP address that's kind of shared amongst all the users. Uh, it keeps that connection more secure, the data that you're transmitting. Um, it, at least in transit, it keeps it secure from like your mobile network picking up that data. Uh, it also encrypts the data that's passing through, uh, so it can't be analyzed, it can't be stolen in transit, that sort of thing. So uh, definitely VPN, it's a potent tool. Um, in oppressive regimes, especially, we're looking to like silence voices through censorship, that sort of stuff. We see this a lot, you know, like in, in China, the censorship in China, VPN is one way that citizens get around that to get true information. Uh, so it's a really great tool. Uh, keep it running for as long as you're out of the house. So number three, is your phone secured? And, you know, we all think that we have security running on our phones. I don't know of anyone in my circle that uses their phone without some sort of phone security for access. In, in recent years, it's been fingerprint, it's been face scan, iris scan. These are all biometric authentication uh, protocols. And you can, in many cases, be compelled to offer over uh, your face. I mean, they really all they, all anyone has to do is hold up your phone to your face and boom, they've accessed all your data or compelled to use your fingerprint to unlock your phone. You cannot be forced to provide a password because it is something that you know. And uh, that's, that's a very common security uh, rule is that for the most protection, at least uh, at least elevated over biometric is to use a very strong password. So go into your settings, remove your stored fingerprints, remove your stored uh, uh, face scan, your iris scan. Just go in there and wipe them out completely. You can always add them later. It's very easy to add these things after the fact. Uh, but for now, get rid of it. Replace it with a strong, and by strong, I mean long password or PIN. And that goes a long way. To protect you. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. It's always important to have a plan for the unexpected. LastPass can be deployed quickly in the midst of any event to ensure your business keeps running smoothly and every employee login is secure. Single sign-on manages employee access in a centralized view, so IT always has insight into who has access to what from where. 
LastPass protects while providing a seamless workflow for your employees. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. All right, number four, and there's a few different factors in here to consider. Uh, How is your lock screen uh, protected? By that, I mean the information, uh, you know, we've kind of talked about setting up the access at the lock screen, but there's a lot more to consider here. Um, Check out that your device actually locks immediately when the display shuts off. There are settings And you can determine this. And sometimes I know because in my production work, I set this for very long. But in this scenario, it would be very different. A OnePlus, for example, you go into settings, do a search for lock screen passcode settings, and you'll find a setting called automatically lock after sleep. Uh, Turn this to immediately. It could be like five minutes or whatever. And the idea here is that, you know, if my phone goes to sleep, uh, give five minutes before it requires my passcode again. It's a convenience setting, right? But in a scenario like this, Uh, you want the most protection. So you want that lock to happen immediately. So set that to immediately. Also, there's a feature that you can find that ties into the power button. How fast does a phone lock when you hit the power button? And again, here it's a convenience setting, right? Um, You want to enable this so that it locks immediately when you hit the power button. That way, if you've got the display on and you feel like you're entering an uncertain situation and you might be compelled to hand over your device for whatever reason, you can hit the power button and bam, you're locked and you don't have to worry as much about that. And you're certainly not handing over a device that is that is completely open. Um, it would also be smart to uh, change the setting on the display timeout to minimum. That way, if you do hand over a device, uh, your display timeout isn't set to like two minutes and it stays on and all they ever have to do is interact with it or go in the settings and change it and bam, uh, they have full access, right? Set that to the minimum setting so it goes off uh, quick. And usually that's like 15 seconds. Another way that the lock screen uh, can reveal too much is by showing all of your notifications. So you're going to want to block those. You go to settings, display, lock screen display, and then what to show on the lock screen. You're going to want to set that to either no notifications, so no data is shown there, uh, or only showing sensitive data when the phone is unlocked. That way you actually have to actively unlock it in order to see anything because you don't want those notifications revealing too much uh, without that authentication. Uh, But do definitely uh, check into those. While you're here, there's also an option on certain phones, definitely on my Pixel, uh, for a a feature called Lockdown. And so in this settings pane uh, on my Pixel, uh, I can turn on Show Lockdown option. And this actually adds a button uh, on the power menu called Lockdown, which does a number of things. Essentially, if I held my power button and tapped Lockdown, It would deactivate Smart Lock, and Smart Lock is a feature in Android that kind of ties the security model of your Android device to connected devices. So if I was connected via a Bluetooth headset, it would say, hey, I trust that Bluetooth headset. uh, Keep the phone unlocked because it's connected to it because I know that my owner (laughs) probably has that headset in and I want to make it easier for my owner. Um, So this would deactivate that entirely. It would over override that. You probably wouldn't have that running anyways, but keep that in mind. Um, It would also... um, deactivate biometric unlock features. So if you happen to have those running, it would deactivate it completely and require a pin or a pattern. And it turns off notifications on the lock screen on the fly. Uh, It does all this automatically when you hit lockdown. So very handy. Pixel, Galaxy S20, OnePlus, and other phones have this feature. Really, you just want to go into settings and do a search for lockdown. And if your phone has it, uh, offers it, you'll find it that way. Uh, two-factor authentication is another consideration. Um, you know, this essentially is, ensures that your important apps are protected with a second factor. Uh, so, for example, it requires another code along with your password to get into certain accounts. Uh, you know, Google, for example, I have my Google account set up on two-factor. I go to the site, I log in with my ID and my password, and then it pulls up another screen, a second factor, which requires another device or another app that's generating a code for me to uh, even get into that account in the first place. It's just another roadblock, another way to lock down your device so that someone can't just intercept what you have and gain access to everything 
And uh, so definitely something to consider. The app that I use for two-factor is Authy. There are a number of apps out there. Google has one called Google Authenticator. There are a whole host of two-factor apps. Takes a little bit of setup in advance, so this is definitely something you want to do before you leave the house. Um, SMS two-factor authentication is another type of two-factor authentication where it sends an SMS uh, pin to your phone via text. And that's better than nothing. But if someone gets a hold of your SIM, they can intercept those two-factor authentication codes. And that's obviously not ideal. So something to consider is locking down your SIM with a PIN. Uh, if you go into settings, do a search for SIM card lock, you'll find the setting. You can activate this and then access that uh, to that SIM will require a password, a PIN that you have determined ahead of time. So if someone wanted to uh, wanted to get a hold of those SMS two-factor authentication codes, they would still need to know the password for your SIM in order to do that if they have physical access to your SIM. Uh, so that's one way to protect it. Um, and, you know, again, that's a PIN number, so you can't be compelled to give that information. And one last thing, if you want more resources on this topic, I urge you to find the Electronic Frontier Foundation's post on surveillance self-defense. Look that up. You're going to get a comprehensive look at everything you need to do before you venture out uh, to protest and to make your voice heard. Some of this stuff is there, uh, but there's also more expanded information. So definitely good to look that over and be sure that you're fully covered. So that's a, a couple of things to consider when when you're leaving the house to make your voice heard. Obviously, like I, I don't believe that this is everything when we're talking about data and we're talking about our mobile devices. We keep a lot of our identity, a lot of ourselves on these devices, almost so much so that it's hard to, to succinctly button up every single aspect of this and to know that we're being as protected as possible. So that's why I go back to what I said at the beginning here, which is if you don't need a smartphone, uh, then don't bring one. If you absolutely don't need one, that's going to be the safest way to go here. Uh, but if you do, these are some security uh, considerations to take a look at and protect yourself and protect those that around you uh, by sharing this information as well. I, uh, man, I don't know what to say other than my heart is in this and I am here as an advocate for change and I support everyone right now going through this hard time and I'm here for you. Send me your emails, hands on Android at twit.tv. Um, you can also subscribe twit.tv slash H O a for all of our episodes. Uh, every Thursday we publish a new episode. And I hope that you do. And I hope that you stay safe and healthy. And uh, we'll see you next time on Hands On Android. Bye, everybody. Be sure to check out the other shows on the network, like my other show, Hands On Wellness. I love to share different tips and tricks that's going to help you get a better grasp on your personal wellness. Just go to twit.tv slash how and subscribe now.